Welcome, everyone. So wonderful to see so many of you being able to join us for the live call that I'm hosting for the growing community of galactic astrology enthusiasts. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And welcome also and uh, much love to all those who will watch this in a replay. I know many people said that they are so excited about this presentation that but can't make the live so they're looking forward to the replay so much love to you all too and uh, those who are here feel free to use the chat feature to say hello and let us know where you're based it's always so nice to feel the worldwide grid forming within our community it will be so great to hear from you there so we are recording this on the 23rd of september 2024 at 8 p.m british summer time and I'm honored to welcome and hold space for Alan Clay's presentation on the new stars for a new era. Welcome, Alan. How are you feeling? Good. Yes. Thank you so much for the invitation. It's beautiful to be here. Very good. I'm so, so glad. So honored. So for any newbies to this topic, Alan Clay is a New Zealand-born writer and filmmaker with international reputation for his fiction and his clown teaching work from his earlier days. The books on that um, you can find on Amazon or any other uh, booksellers called Angels Can Fly and Modern Clown User Guide. How you know peculiar to combine yeah. that or transition from that to deep dive to astrology. So in the astrologers community, Alan is immensely valued and loved uh, by the astrology enthusiasts for his pioneering shared research on the astrology of dwarf planets and their impact on human consciousness, presenting his work in a highly practical manner that can be applied to everyday life experience. So you can find more about Alan's immense contribution to the evolution of astrology on his website, Dwarf Planet astrology.com and you'll find plenty of invaluable resources there dwarf planet university including a diploma course and you can connect with his community and more so it's such an honor and pleasure to be here with you today alan i'll just give a quick intro to the to the talk and give you the mic right after okay so okay lovely. today's talk is based on alan's latest book new stars for a new era a consciousness workbook for our 10 new planets. It'll give an overview of the aspects of consciousness represented, thank you, by each of our 10 new planets. Well, we took a vote in our community earlier this month about which of the 10 planets we should go into more detail into, and Homea was the winner. So we will zoom in on Homea, but uh, we will briefly touch on um Ixion, Orcus, Salacia, Varuna, Homea, um, Pokar, Makemake, Gong Gong, Eris, and Sedna. All right, but as we dive deeper then on Homea, as the higher octave of Neptune, our new goddess of rebirth and unity consciousness, who connects us to the magic of life and the oneness of our existence. We will look at exercises to practically apply the energy and at house interpretation uh, interpretations with examples of famous people to bring them to life. So the talk is um, has grown out of research at the Dwarf Planet University that Alan is connected to, where it is obvious that by simply making these new aspects conscious, students become empowered and their lives are transformed. And we see this also with galactic astrology as we apply um, or connect to the consciousness of the stars and uh, super cosmic points as galactic center and beyond. So as we engage with these new consciousness energies to take them out of the unconscious area of action um, and enabling this, we can you know use the talk um, the today's presentation by Alan and work with his book to include conscious exercises for each planet so we can onboard their energy in our lives. And as we do, we will become empowered and our lives will be transformed. So how exciting. I, I can't wait to hear this, uh, see this presentation mm -hmm. and then also engage with our community. Some amazing questions were sent in advance and I'm sure some brilliant questions will be born during the call today. So welcome, everyone. And Alan, take it away. <laughs> Thank you so much. 
<laughs> well, I will. I'll jump straight in so that yes. we can make the most of our time here today. So today, looking at new stars for a new era, and particularly the unity consciousness of Haumea. So many astrologers believe that new planets are discovered when we're ready to incorporate the new consciousness represented by that planet into our existing consciousness. We've noticed this with the discovery of Uranus, Neptune and Pluto over the last 200 years. Now with the discovery of 10 more planets, outer planets, we're entering a period of rapid consciousness development. So our personal consciousness develops within the collective consciousness around us, and we see this mapped out in the personal planets in our chart. These are the planets out to Saturn that are visible to the naked eye, and they address facets of our personality that are important in living day to day. When we're at inner planet consciousness, everything that's important is our feelings, our ideas and values, our agency, and the luck and material rewards that these bring us. You can't take it with you, right? And at this level, we tend not to be conscious of the action of the outer planets in our lives. So the inner planets represent aspects of personality and the outer planets aspects of consciousness. So as each new outer planet is discovered, it represents a new aspect of consciousness that's becoming available to us. Over the last 200 years, we've discovered three new planets. The discovery of Uranus brought us intuitive consciousness, the discovery of Neptune, spiritual consciousness, and the discovery of Pluto, psychological consciousness. Then since the turn of the 21st century, we've discovered another 10 planets. The discovery of so many new outer planets at one time represents a feast of new consciousness that's now available to us. The enlightenment that until now was only available to select gurus and priests after years of devout work is now open to everyone. Because these outer planets talk of consciousness, how they manifest in our lives depends on our current level of consciousness. Most people on the planet experience the outer planets as unconscious influences. At this level, these esoteric new energies are only perceived when they barge into our lives in a confrontational way because we haven't been sensitive and adaptable in the lead up. As we develop spiritually and we consciously onboard these new energies, they become like guides into new territory, offering us special skills or challenges depending on the aspects in our chart. At this level, rather than unconscious influences, the outer planets become like a new superconsciousness. Let's look briefly at each of them, each of the ones beyond Saturn, to put them in context. As we embark on the spiritual path to make a larger sense out of the experiences in our personal lives, we start activating our Uranian and Neptunian energies and bring them into our consciousness. As we do, we begin to realize that the you-can't-take-it-with-you approach of the inner planets is actually a delusion. Uranus brings intuitive flashes into our personal planet consciousness and, bring, and begins to connect us with the collective consciousness, breaking through our Saturnian defences to allow new impulses and connections. So the discovery of Uranus enabled consciousness growth in our lives. We can look at Uranus as the higher octave of Mercury, because he takes Mercury's ideas, communications, and curiosity and networks them at a higher spiritual level. Neptune tunes us into the bigger picture and brings it into our lives. He encourages us to search for a larger meaning for our personal experiences and teaches us about faith as a way of deepening consciousness. Neptune is traditionally considered to be the higher octave of Venus, where her values and aesthetics are expressed at a more spiritual level through the imagination and psychic opening of Neptune. Which brings us to dwarf planet Pluto, who is the gatekeeper of the outer transpersonal planets. Here we must accept the limitations of our ego consciousness, let go of compulsions and unconscious constructs, and accept that change is the only constant. 
Pluto dissolves our ego so we can open to the new higher consciousness that is becoming available to us. The discovery of Pluto enabled the psychological understanding of our lives. This produced the shadow paradigm, where the darkness in our souls is seen to be buried in our unconscious. And the convenience of this is we don't have to address it on a day-to-day -day basis. But we need to ditch Pluto's shadow paradigm to consciously enable him and these other new energies in our lives. As with all the outer planets, Pluto manifests differently depending on our level of consciousness. So what we have been calling his shadow is simply how he manifests when we are at personal planet level of consciousness. As we get on the spiritual path, Pluto gives us the adaptability and resilience to mediate the transition that's occurring in our lives in each moment. And at the spiritually evolved level, we can transmute loneliness and separation into love and long-term relationships, affecting our generation in our lives. Pluto now has two new brothers who share his orbit as well as his angle to the ecliptic. They also share his gravitational resonance with Neptune, as all three make two orbits of the Sun to every three of Neptune's. Pluto's new brothers are, however, polar opposites. The first is the seeker consciousness of Ixion who enables us to develop our authenticity following Pluto's action to dissolve our ego center. We are one with the universe, but still exist as an individual. And that dichotomy is bridged by being like authentically ourselves in our contact with the divine. Exion encourages us to be a passionate but lawless follower of our heart or loins, depending on our consciousness level. Ixion is always encouraging us to ask the question, are the rules we're playing by the right ones? He urges us to push the boundaries and ask for forgiveness afterwards rather than permission before. As we develop a spiritual approach, we enable our moral compass and learn to honour the bad girl or bad boy energy inside us and follow our heart. This level, Ixion encourages us to be authentically ourselves while being sensitive to the unspoken agreements in our relationships so we know how far we can go. The second brother, Orcus, opens us to karmic consciousness. He teaches us to align with the spiritual creed and understand the karmic process of life. A creed expresses the shared beliefs of a religious community by summarizing the core tenets. These tenets are simple and globally applicable, providing guide rails to help us navigate life. Orcus is Pluto's straight-talking brother. He's the master of integrity at the highest level, but at the personal planet level, he can also encourage us to engage in double talk and deception. As we develop spiritually, however, Orcus gives us a self-sufficiency that will nourish us through the long and difficult work that we sometimes find necessary for personal evolution. This level, as we deal with the shadow side of our lives, we become accountable for our deeds and our actions. And at the highest level, we gain the shamanic ability to transmute shadow into light. Everything contains shadow, and therefore presents us with an opportunity to transmute shadow, producing a new, more spiritual home. Next, we develop higher love consciousness and learn to evaluate our options with Salasia, who gives us the power to foresee opportunities and find the appropriate time to embrace them. She also gives us a self-protective quality that helps us weather both the real and the psychic storms in our lives. And she enables us to take a leap of faith, especially when we know we're going to be profoundly transformed by the experience. At the personal planet level, however, Selassie's liminal nature enables us to pick up on the sexual energy around us. 
we may have an erotic fascination or interest and engage in socially unacceptable, even illicit sexual activity. If this vital energy is blocked, we might feel out of control or incapable of changing our situation. However, as we develop spiritually, she enables us to remove the barriers to happiness in our lives. And we learn to approach life with an easy sense of humor that helps us get through the difficult times. And at the highest level, Sulasya is about bringing true love into our lives and empowering us spiritually. Then we embrace mastery consciousness with Varuna. We learn to devote ourselves to something so deeply that over time we develop a sovereignty that is built on vast experience. We can look at Varuna as the higher octave of Saturn. Where Saturn rules by control and through laws and restriction, Varuna has a natural sovereignty, but we have to claim this through action. Sovereignty is a dance between our intention and the collective psyche. We have to claim it, and at the same time, others have to agree to give it to us. Over time, through this dance, we gain support and notability for our work. Once we're on the spiritual path, Varuna teaches us to stand in the center of our lives and own the results of our dance with karma and dharma. And at the spiritually evolved level, we can develop an inner conscious authority as we learn to practice compassion in action. This level, we're focused on the higher good and we likely have a mastery over the flow of consciousness in our lives. Indeed, we may experience ongoing revelations and may become a sort of sage in some area. Next, we connect to source and embrace unity consciousness with Haumea, who works at a spiritual level to nourish and replenish our lives. She connects us to the psychic unity that exists across space and time and with the oneness of our existence. She does this in each moment simply by re reigniting in us the magic of being alive. She encourages us to live in the present and to savor every moment of life, allowing us to appreciate the beauty of the world around us and within us. Hamir is the higher octave of Neptune, turning his psychic opening into real psychic connection. At the personal planet level, however, this can manifest as a lack of connection, a sort of spiritual alienation. However, as we develop spiritually, she gives us a direct link with the soul level. And as we deepen our connection to source, we learn to facilitate a constant renewal in our own lives and in the lives of others. This level, we understand that the bountiful universe manifests through us and we learn to enable this by leaving our ego at the door and trusting in the divine process. So we're coming back to Hamia, obviously, uh, after we've just run through all of these ones. So then we develop our spirit consciousness with Kwawa, who in myth sings and dances the world into existence. Kwawa encourages us to find a practice to bring spirit into our physical lives. Song and dance are practices that call spirit into our lives, as are activities like meditation, yoga, bushwalks, even sport. Anything can be a practice to enrich our lives with spirit. That's what we're realizing as we're onboarding Kwawa. Kwawa is also the song and dance we tell ourselves about our lives. Our unique song and dance is a spirit story which underpins who we are. As we develop spiritually, we learn to embrace a spirit of discovery and see life as a dynamic meditation where we can see opportunities in real time and act on them. At this level, Kwawa becomes the higher octave of Jupiter, lifting Jupiter's dumb luck into a smart luck through this meditation practice. 
And at the spiritually evolved level, we see the song and dance of spirit in everything. And we understand that we are part of a rich chorus of spirit which underpins the physical world. This allows us to manifest spirit as required to bring order out of chaos and create harmony in our lives. Next, we develop systems consciousness and learn to innovate with Maki Maki, who drives spirit into our lives, opening us to the new richness of the sacred consciousness. He's a spiritual trickster, allowing us to play with the area of our, our lives signified by his position in our chant. He encourages us to see ourselves as an organic whole, as well as a member of a team. Through participation and understanding the teamwork process, we learn how to be sensitive enough to tune in to our fellow team members. This interaction gives us a worldview built from our experience and a view of our place in that world. As we develop spiritually, Maki Maki calls spiritual nourishment into our lives and gives us a devotional focus that borders on genius. We can look at him as the higher octave of Uranus, lifting Uranus's intuition into a rich understanding. This level, we're able to alchemically break down existing ideas into their component parts and put them back together in new configurations. We understand the context behind the ideas, which enables us to be playful in this process. And at the spiritually evolved level, we can see the big picture and integrate it into our personal devotional focus at such a deep level that everything becomes a valuable creative resource for our growth. Then we learn empathic consciousness with Gong Gong, who encourages us to participate in the marketplace of life. He enables us to feel inside other people and walk a mile in their shoes so we may see the world through their eyes. In order to empathize with others, however, we have to get out of our own emotions. So at the personal planet level, he can encourage us to be emotionally self-indulgent and to lash out in an attempt to get our own way. This level, we may feel overwhelmed by our emotions and unable to see a clear path forward through the morass of our personal feelings. As we develop a more spiritual approach, we begin to understand that we live in a symbiotic relationship with others and that our divine work is to let go of the base emotions so that we can be sensitive to the emotional community in which we are nestled and open to the empathic support of others. At this level, we can pull our energy to achieve collective aims as we learn to channel our emotions and mold our psychic space to improve our productivity. And at the spiritually evolved level, we can nurture the emotional and the psychic bonds between us. Next, we come to diversity consciousness with Eris, as we learn to value everything and everyone for who, who they are. Eris encourages us to simultaneously look at ourselves in an un uncompromising way and also to be inclusive in our world. We tend to fool ourselves and overlook our shortcomings just to get through each day. But Eris draws her strength from the unflinching nature of her understanding. It's all valuable to her and will only be complete and embrace our full power when we accept our multifaceted nature. At the personal planet level, Eris encourages us to engage in discord and strife so we learn to stop fooling ourselves or stop being fooled. As we adopt a more spiritual approach, we understand that our strife can be dealt with simply by accepting opposing points of view. So simple. <laughs> At this level, she enables us to see clearly without preconceptions and helps us to keep body and mind in harmony so that health and happiness prevails. And at the highest level, she's a spirit guide, transmuting life 
into love and bring sacred wisdom into our lives. Eris is the higher octave of Pluto, lifting his transformative energy into a fierce grace. This gives us a female power, which is gentle, but which rises to meet the needs of any challenge. Power, but male power. Now we've got a female power. Finally, we embrace the soul consciousness of Sedna, who is always trying to get us onto the spiritual path. She represents our soul's path of destiny. If we accept that our soul incarnates over a number of lifetimes and that it has a purpose to grow through these incarnations, then that soul purpose for this life is shown by the placement of Sedna. In that area of our lives, we transcend to a new holistic spiritual consciousness where we can allow love and harmony. As we develop spiritually, Sedna teaches us to keep our heart open in what we're increasingly realize, realizing is a sort of hell that we're currently living through. We're still very early in our consciousness development as a species, and we have to keep our heart open for our benefit and for everyone else's benefit in this difficult phase. To enable this, Sedna encourages us to nurture our sense of humour. Humour is a wonderful tool on the spiritual path because it allows us to release baggage and lighten our load on our soul's path of destiny. This level, Sedna encourages us to beat our drum and sing our song to life. As we step up to do the soul-based work that we're here to do, we move through a fated transcendence to a more transpersonal consciousness. At the spiritually evolved level, we can embrace our spiritual destiny and joyfully do what our soul wants to do. This level, she brings us transcendent peace and the ability to nurture abundance. When we're in tune with our soul needs, our material needs manifest in our lives in each moment. May not be what we want, but it is what we need. And as we have the courage to embrace and nurture that, we open to the source of abundance in our lives. All right, so that's a quick run through of the 10, um, that's actually the second chapter in, in my book, New Stars for a New Era. Um, and now we're going to jump to the Haumea chapter, have a look at her meaning uh, astrologically, and then through the houses, uh, because the houses are where we see, we'll, we'll talk about this as it comes. Um, I, I sort of, I can take questions very quickly if if there's anything on this that's coming up for anyone that's, uh, you know, I'm not going to, um, we'll have time at the end for, for, for lots of questions, but sometimes when things come up is the best time to deal with them. Um, Thank you. And so far the, in the comments, people are sharing their placements, um, good. their appreciation and so on. So I think we can good. leave the questions till the end and you can keep going. If that's all right with everyone, unless something pops um, up, feel free to. That's good. Beautiful. Perfect. Um, yes, your placements is good. Good to know. And if you if you don't know, um, go online and try and find um, your house position because that'll be interesting when we go through the house interpretations. Because the house is where we do see it most clearly in our lives. All right, so let's jump into looking at Haumea. So Haumea is the planet of rebirth uh, who works at a spiritual level to nourish and replenish our lives. She connects us to the psychic unity that exists across space-time and with the oneness of our existence. And she does this in each moment simply through the magic of being alive. It's magic. She encourages us to live in the present and to savour every moment of our life, allowing us to appreciate the beauty of the world around us and within us. Representing a psychic shift from the worldview that separates us from nature to the embodied recognition and power of being one with nature, Hamia gives us the power to create and regenerate our lives when we align with the natural world and its rhythms. 
when we connect with our psychic center, we're able to protect those we love and we can embody the divinity in each moment. Her love is all-encompassing and unconditional. But to enable this, we have to leave our ego at the door. We can think of her as the higher octave of Neptune, where Neptune's psychic opening has the potential to blossom into real psychic connection with Haumea, a connection to the soul level. We often understand soul on the individual level, yet when we have evolved and embraced Haumea in our lives, the soul level includes not only all of humanity, but all beings. We are all one. Life is a process for Haumea, a process of rejuvenation. She is always catalyzing rebirth in our lives. She does this by encouraging a spirit of play within the sacred work that we're doing. Play requires trust in the bigger picture. We need to allow ourselves to let go and explore the myriad of creative possibilities without judgment. And that way we deepen the sacred. So her energy is playful and creative, symbolizing a constant renewal and a joy in life. When we experience how many psychic connection unconsciously, however, it can come with a similar righteousness to Neptune, but with much more psychic force behind it. As a result, we might ride roughshod over everyone or stick our neck out about something and so get ourselves into trouble. So she also talks of the day-to-day -day pressures we experience that might reshape us and the danger that it all might spin out of control. Or even more likely, we find no connection to the psychic source. So our life shrivels up and we live in a sort of spiritual starvation, a starvation of life energy. The unconscious level, we are likely to try and fill this lack of meaningful connection by indulging in the hollow pleasures of consumer society. But no amount of money can buy the connection we seek. So this just leaves us feeling even more alienated. At this level, we may respond by being overly dramatic and attention seeking, or by making claims of martyrdom. We become so desperate for meaningful connection it. And there is always a danger of our drama could spin out of control and bring everything in our lives crashing down. As we develop a more spiritual approach, we learn to trust in the life process and deepen our connection to the psyche through allowing the magic of being in each moment. We all know these special moments when we're out in nature or in the arms of our love or deep in meditation, where we feel the life force chorusing through us. This psychic connection to the oneness of life is the magic that Halmea opens us to in each moment. With Halmea, there are times where we might pick up too much psychic energy and need to withdraw, absorb and refresh through rest, meditation or sleep. With awareness and application, we can learn to offload the non-nutritive more readily and connect with a never-failing source of psychic sustenance. Haumea talks about being part of a family born of a collision with reality, and she teaches us the value of nurturing the disparate aspects of our psychic identity. She throws us into experiences where we collide with consensus reality. But in that collision, we find a like-hearted community. This is a Hamea community. These, commun these situations, in these situations, we experience our shared interests, which creates a sense of family that transcends biology. Thus, at the spiritual level, she encourages us to find a community to connect with a family of souls who can play important roles in our lives and to find a new way of living together with them. These people may be spread across the planet and may not be the obvious choice, but our connection with them will psychically nourish us and them. 
In today's world, where many of us are seeking a sense of belonging, of connection to land or place, Haumea also talks about migration to a new home. We have increased levels of migration from political uh, persecution and accelerating global climate change. And Hamir is here to remind us of what joins us together. Her spirituality is inherent in the embodied experience. It transcends the dualistic mind of black or white, right or wrong, belief or non-belief. We simply know in our bones that we are interconnected. And as we deepen this contact with source, we learn to facilitate a constant renewal in our lives and in others' lives through this connection. We learn to ride the psychic waves and the lava flows that arise in each moment and to be accepting and creative with those opportunities. This level, we understand that the bountiful universe manifests through us when we are open to it. And to enable this, we know we have to leave our ego behind and trust in the divine process. Keynote. Our media is always bringing renewal into our lives. But we have to welcome this and gracefully surrender the old so there is space for the new to grow. However, our sense of security often derives from the possessions and routines that we have built up over many years. And as a result, we can become very attached to the old. When we are rooted in the past for our security, we protect ourselves from any regeneration because we feel it will challenge the foundations of our world. But regeneration is essential for a healthy life. No living thing can maintain a stasis within growth. So we have to be open to the growth. We have to welcome it and nurture it. When we hang on blindly to the old, the only way the new can be birthed is through crisis and disaster. By desperately hanging on to the past, we actually are calling crisis and disaster into our lives to help us let go and allow the necessary rebirth. When we cling, we are choosing to ignore the signals that change is required. At any time, some part of our reality is obsolete or creaking in some way, and new psychic opportunities are germinating. The challenge is to open ourselves to this germination and deal with the creaking piece of reality at the same time. If we trust that this is a natural process, a natural growth process, we can gracefully surrender the old and simultaneously embrace the new. All right, you, you probably understand this. So if you don't work with the chart, um, your birth chart is divided into 12 houses, which represent the different areas of your life, such as home or relationships. The houses focus the ethereal outer planet energies so we can more clearly see them in our lives. Bear in mind that these new conscious energies manifest in our lives differently depending on our current level of consciousness. And you will find that Hamia has been interpreted in each house differently from those and to put for those at the personal planet level of consciousness, which we'll call the unconscious level, or for those on the spiritual path and those at the spiritually evolved level. We're all working at all levels, and we're likely to see ourselves reflected in the interpretations at each level to varying degrees. The aim is to encounter the higher manifestations of each planet in our lives, which we do by developing our spiritual perspective. Right, so Hamia in the first house. So Hamia's psychic connection in the first house is to the center of ourselves. Planets in this house influence our personality, and with Hamia here, the magic of being infuses our body and our views on life with a rich creative energy. The personal planet level of consciousness, however, this can manifest as an extremely egocentric approach. And because this house is about how others perceive us, we may come across as being intense and very self-involved. As we adopt a more spiritual approach, however, we can develop a willful self-awareness which mitigates this, together with a rock-solid integrity that others can feel. 
At the spiritual level, this placement nourishes our creativity, our adaptability, and our resourcefulness with the life-giving qualities of our man. Danish writer Hans Christian Andersen is an example. His magic of being inspired numerous generations. His fables, fables of morality were translated into more than 100 languages, more than any book other than the Bible. And exemplifying the self-involvement of this house, he also wrote three autobiographies. As we deepen our contact with Source, we learn to trust our gut, gut instincts and develop a soulful confidence in our work. At this level, the life energy is pouring through us and we can nourish others with it and may have the ability to foster psychic unity. Right, New Zealander Faye Blake Cossa, who runs an astrology school in Amsterdam. Her master's dissertation offers a life cycle model for organizational development. And her work focuses on making clients feel safe while applying her extensive training in inner child integration therapy. Second house, jumping. All right, with how many in the second house, we can bring about a material rejuvenation, both in our own lives and in the world around us. We have the psychic power to manifest what we want in the real world when we open to source and believe in ourselves. At the personal planet uh, consciousness level, we may have a bit of a bulldozer approach to our security needs, however, and to our sensual pleasures. This may be uh, successful in the short term, but things like bullying are not sustainable practices for healthy life, nor is relying on non-paid volunteers, fans, or devotees for support. With this placement, we need to ensure that we are giving as much as we are receiving on both the material and the psychic levels, and that we remain faithful to our values. As we develop a more spiritual approach, we likely have a deep appreciation of our sensual experience and of nature, and we understand the humanizing and social function of art. Because the second house is about cultivation and how Mia is about fostering and fertility, this is a very creative and generative placement. Like Mae West, who wrote most of her material, her own material, and became an icon of sexual power and fem femininity. She was so faithful to her values of free create, creative and sexual expression that she was prosecuted for moral charges because her first Broadway play, Sex, depicted homosexuality. She bailed her cast out, but she chose to stay in jail herself to garner the publicity. We see the generative power of Halmini in this house in her status as the second and highest paid person in the US at the height of her career. As we deepen our contact with Source, this can bring a bountiful process of renewal into our lives, which provides us with everything we need. And our sense of self-worth can also enjoy a constant state of renewal. At this level, we understand that psychic energy underpins everything in the physical world and we can transcend the material desires of our ego. Like revered Indian spiritual teacher, Nisargadatta Maharaj, whose teachers, teachings centered on the development of spiritual insight, understanding the illusory nature of the world and finding liberation from suffering. His core message was that by recognizing and abiding in the eternal consciousness within, individuals could find true peace, freedom, and spiritual growth. Tell me out in the second house. He taught that identifying with the body and its desires was a hindrance to spiritual growth. Instead, he advocated for a shift in consciousness, recognizing oneself as the unchanging witness of all experiences, including the aging and decay of the physical body. 
Jumping to the third house, the renewal in the third house is in our ideas, our communications, and our immediate environment. Ami is always searching for spiritual answers, and in this house, her curiosity infuses all our communications. If we can see the forest for the trees. A personal planet level, because this house talks about the lower mind, we may get lost in the trees, lost in the detail and feel insecure in these contexts. We may make up for this by demanding attention or by making claims of martyrdom and sacrifice to secure attention. As we develop a more spiritual approach, there's likely a renewal process occurring in our thinking patterns, which keeps them fresh and relevant and gives us the insight to see the divinity of human beings and the oneness of our existence. Like Eric Young, who wrote Fear of Flying, which is controversial for its depiction of female sexuality, female liberation, and women's search for personal and emotional fulfillment outside of traditional roles and expectations. Her work catalyzed the development of second wave feminism, fighting for reproductive rights and gender equality in the workplace and against domestic violence and sexual harassment. She was married four times, embodying Halmea's ability to be reborn. And as we deepen our contact with source, an unshakable personal inner knowing emerges. Halmea's ability to reconstruct, redefine and transform, especially regarding consciousness, is strengthened with this placement. Like American musician Van Morrison, who Rolling Stone magazine commented had the striking imagination of a consciousness that is visionary in the strongest sense of the word. He described himself as a Christian mystic and has investigated various religions which serve as an inspiration for his music. Jumping to the fourth house. Fourth house is the base of our consciousness, the sacred ground in which our consciousness is rooted. And with Haumea here, we have a psychic connection to the oneness of humanity embedded with that consciousness. At the personal planet level, however, this house shows the karmic baggage we brought with us into this life. And Haumea's placement here might make us feel too self-centered and a little too invested in getting our own way, so we adopt a forceful approach. This house talks about instinctive behavior and how Mia is about opening doors within us. So our level of consciousness is crucial in seeing and evaluating those doors. Indian-born author Salman Rushdie has this placement. This work primarily deals with connections, disruptions, and migrations between Eastern and Western civilizations. His book, The Satanic Verses, generated debate in the Muslim world and provoked a backlash. The supreme leader of Iran issued a religious decree calling for his death. As a result, for many years, he was forced to go into hiding and adopt a reclusive lifestyle confined in the sacred space of his fourth house for his own safety. More recently, he's come out and been attacked. And it's now back, I think, in this fourth house. As we develop a more spiritual approach, we can bring the spiritual wealth and rejuvenation of our man into our home and our inner emotional security. For those who believe in reincarnation, fourth house gives us clues to our karmic lesson for this lifetime. And with how Mia here, the lesson is to reconnect with the psychic unity of humanity across time and space, to feel the oneness of existence. Margaret Atwood has this placement. Her written works encompass themes such as gender and identity, religion and myth, the power of language and climate change. Her sci-fi book, The Handmaid's Tale, explores the interdependence of the sexes in a futuristic dystopian world, causing the reader to question the usury nature of our relationships and move beyond them into embodying psychic unity. As we deepen our contact with source, we create a sacred space where we can base our consciousness. This base is a fertile ground where we are always able to find nourishment for our higher consciousness. 
and our higher consciousness can always find the companionship of like-hearted souls. Coming to the fifth house. So the fifth house is all about being ourselves and enjoying it. And with how many are here, we're likely to be very creative in this process. With this placement, our joy will have a regenerative effect both on ourselves and on others. The personal planet level of consciousness, however, we may come on too strong in our love affairs, our creative self-expression, and our parenting. There is, there is a risk of being overly dramatic and attention-seeking as a cover for our lack of real psychic connection. And this is the house of risk-taking, so we must be careful not to feel any lack of connection with others with hollow pleasures like gambling. As we develop a more spiritual approach, we can learn to bring a spirit of play into our romantic affairs, our creativity, and our parenting, to take the risks necessary to grow in these areas. Like Philip K. Dick, whose fiction explored philosophical and social questions such as the nature of reality, perception, human nature, and identity. Embodying how near he was married five times. Later in his life, following a series of mystical experiences, his work moved into the realms of theology and metaphysics. Then as we deepen our contact with source, we gain a passionate understanding of the humanizing and the social functions of art. At this level, the fostering ability and fertility of Haumea gives us a rich bounty of joy and love as the creative medium of our work. Centering in love, Elizabeth Kubler-Ross, Swiss psychiatrist and author, is noted for her work in renewing our relationship to dying and death. Her belief in the continuity of life's spirit through the experience of death enabled her to assist more than 20,000 people with their passage into the, an afterlife. Six hours. With how me in the sixth house of routine tasks and duties, every moment can be alive with spirit and in touch with the magic of being. For this placement, we have a magic touch which can breathe life into anything we turn our hand to, and particularly to the services we provide. The personal planet level of consciousness, however, we may not be aware of our gifts and worry about our lack of meaningful connection could manifest in our lives as anxiety disorders. We have to be mindful not to play the hypochondriac or be attention-seeking to compensate. This house also talks about our method of responding to everyday crises. And at this level, we may ride roughshod over people because of the urgency of our immediate demand. As we develop a more spiritual approach, Haumea gives us the willfulness to seek a strong psychic connection in each moment and the regenerative strength required in moments of crisis. We see this in Farida, Queen of Egypt, who liberated women in Egyptian culture from their secluded role as mothers to become participants in society. She did this by taking a public role as queen in her marriage, which also freed the other royal women from the seclusion of the harem. She later gave up the status of queen in order to divorce her husband and gain her personal freedom. As we deepen our contact with Source, Helmia gives us the courage to see the divinity of human beings and the oneness of existence in each moment. At this level, we have an ability to reach out into the psychic soil around us and connect with both a larger wisdom and an unshakable person in a knowing. Like Reinhold Ebertine, considered the founder of cosmobiology, which holds that cosmic energies influence bi biological processes on Earth. Of course, this influence is evidenced by the moon's impact on our waters. His work in this branch of astrology integrates psychology, medicine, sociology, and biology into an understanding of the rhythms of our daily lives. Okay, into the social houses. 
So the seventh house is the house of our one-to-one -one relationships. And with Halmea here, our search for spirit is answered through our relationships. Seventh house relationships are about cooperation and sharing, and they generally serve some functional purpose in our larger social community. The personal planet level of consciousness, however, we may experience quarrels and separations in our relationships if we're not tuning into our partner. The lack of respect implied by our insensitivity can breed open energy, enemies, and lawsuits. Like American filmmaker Francis Ford Coppola, who had a roller coaster career, which forced him into bankruptcy three times in 10 years as a result of bad investments of his early film profits. His iconic movie, The Godfather, nevertheless had a defining effect on modern culture. He was initially reluctant to direct it until he focused on the deeper themes of family and capitalism in America. As we develop a more spiritual approach, we engage in diplomacy, which opens doors for us and others. Halmiya's renewal comes both through a reconnection with our inner fountain of youth and with the collective psyche through our one-to-one -one relationships. Like Jane Fonda, who has undergone a variety of reinventions in her life, including actor, exercise guru, feminist, political activist, author, businesswoman, and wife to a, a number of famous men. The title of her autobiography encapsulates her regenerative power. Prime time. Love, health, sex, fitness, friendship, spirit, making the most of all of your life. As we deepen our contact with source, we can reach a state of psychic equilibrium and enjoy rock solid integrity in our contacts in all official matters. This level we're able to connect with souls who can play important roles in our lives, psychically nourishing us and them as we find a new way of living together. Eighth house. Eighth house rules the processes and things by which we transform and become more powerful, including through sexual interaction. So this placement gives us a fountain of renewal to assist that empowerment. The personal planet level of consciousness, transformation usually requires some type of death, loss or injury first. This is the house of karma, where we make personal sacrifices for the collective. And at this level, we may be a bit of a drama queen because Taumia likes to make claims of martyrdom and sacrifice to secure attention. Anything goes. Or we could abuse our psychic sensitivity by using other people's energy, taking advantage of non-paid volunteers, fans, or devotees. However, as we develop a more spiritual approach, the regenerative nature of both the house and the planet work together to allow a flowing spirit, spring of spirit into our lives, keeping us in touch with the magic of being. Like uh, Masaru Emoto, original thinker, Japanese artist, and author of The Hidden Messages in Water, his extensive research and photography of the frozen crystal form of water gave humanity striking visuals of how water is affected at the molecular level by what's around it. Or like Jane Goodall, who is the world's leading expert in the social life of chimpanzees. She observed behaviors that we consider only human, like hugging, kissing, and even tickling, saying, it isn't only human beings who have personality, who are capable of rational thought and emotions like joy and sorrow. In later years, she founded Roots and Shoots, which brings together youth worldwide to work on environmental conservation and humanitarian issues. As we deepen our contact with Source, we strengthen our accountability, understanding the give and take required to maintain this flow. This level, our sensitivity to collective psychic energies can bring us the clairvoyance to see how these energies will play out. We understand that the bountiful universe manifests through us when we are open to it. And to enable this, we know we have to leave our ego at the door and trust in the divine process. 
Ninth house, Palmyra is always searching for spiritual answers. And in the ninth house, this is about the experiences we encounter when we search for the meaning of things. So this placement sends us on a rich exploration of life. At the personal planet level of consciousness, we could be locked into belief systems and experience head-on collisions with others who believe differently. Or we could feel insecure in intellectual areas areas, unable to make enough spiritual connection to make any sense out of our experience. However, Haumea has an ability to reconstruct, redefine, and transform, especially regarding consciousness. And as we develop a more spiritual approach, we're able to discover larger fields of social existence by synthesizing known data in a new way. Like Patch Adams, who maintains that humor and joy are more important than any drug or therapy in the healing process. Recovering from psychological problems himself, he went back to school to become a doctor and set up the Gesundheit Institute, where he charges no fees, has no malpractice insurance, and lives with his patients in a country farm setting. At the Institute, medicine is integrated with the performing arts, crafts, agriculture, nature, recreation, and social service. As we deepen our contact with source, this placement can bring an unshakable personal inner knowing and put us in touch with the magic of being, accentuating Hamea's profound idealism and sense of freedom as the highest principle. We see this in Icelandic musician Bjork's political support of liberation movements for Kosovo and Greenland. She also supports the individuality of young artists by helping them launch their careers. Her music is unique, and she and her fans share an alternative view of the universe. I think there's a spiritual element in everything. Walking down the street can be spiritual or it can be silly. It's up to the person. I can definitely say that making and listening to music are spiritual experiences for me. Tenth house. Tenth house encompasses the most public areas of our lives and the career that we develop. And with how many are here, we're in tune with society and are likely to be a reformer. The personal planet level of consciousness, however, we may have trouble connecting with the psychic oneness of society, and so, and so may come on too strong with our answers for others, alienating them and making our job harder. But as we develop a more spiritual approach, we can open ourselves to this oneness that's all around us and draw strength from this, understanding the bigger picture. This house includes the social foundations of recognition for achievements and sense of duty to society. Amir's placement here can bring the insight to see the divinity of human beings in all our social activities. Like Scottish observational comedian Billy Connolly, known for his crass use of language and reference to human bodily functions. His irreverence dissolves the social boundaries, uniting us as humans. I think it's time for people to get together, not split apart. The more people stay together, the happier they'll be, he says. As we deepen our contact with Source, we can embody this divinity and develop the spiritual wealth and rock-solid integrity that is the basis of the community power and prestige of this house. This level, we feel the life energy, and we can use this connection to enable social rejuvenation. Like Italian educator Maria Montessori, who developed the Montessori method, which emphasizes the development of a child's own initiative and natural abilities through practical play. This method provides educators with a new understanding of child development that allows children to develop at their own pace. We're all different. Eleventh house, racing through. The psychic connection with Halmir in the eleventh house is to our community, to our collective consciousness. With this placement, we will gather a soul family and find a new way of living together with them. These people may be spread across the planet and may not be the obvious choice, 
that our connection will psychically nourish us from them. The personal planet level of consciousness, however, this can manifest as a lack of connection because of our, because our sense of belonging is inward looking. Or we make seek indiscriminate connection with friends or groups or force a connection because we are so desperate for our belonging that we do not evaluate friends or groups appropriately. As we develop a more spiritual approach, however, we can become more sensitive to this process and more aware of consciousness. At this level, the, con the collective consciousness provides a rich field of opportunity for the profound idealism of Haumea, and we will actively seek out groups with like-minded views. Uh, leading Mexican artist Frida Kahlo exemplifies this profound idealism. I have a great restlessness about my paintings, mainly because I want to make it useful for the revolutionary communist movement. Until now, I have managed simply an honest expression of my own self. Today, she is regard regarded as an icon for the feminist movement, the LGBTQ plus community, and for Chicanos, the culture which embodies the in-between nature of cultural hybridity that is neither fully American nor Mexican. As we deepen our contact with Source, the love and charity of this house combines with the spiritual wealth of Haumea to enable us to redefine and transform the collective consciousness and foster the magic of being in our lives and the lives of those around us. Like Leonard Cohen, whose spirituality permeated all of his work. He evolved from a struggling writer to a successful singer and songwriter and then became a Zen monk. Through his music, we shared in his personal spiritual journey from an alienated space as a younger person to a strong connection with the magic of being alone. His music is known for being bittersweet, yet gracefully expressing the dark night of the soul. Twelfth house. So this is the house of the collective unconscious and of spiritual realization. And how Mia's placement here gives the potential for deep spiritual connection. This is also the house of the subconscious, where the hidden self which is the hidden self that exists apart from our physical everyday reality. So at the personal planet level of consciousness, we not, may not be in touch with this side of ourselves. As a result, we may inadvertently expose ourselves or have issues of privacy. Finding refuge, seclusion or retreat may help us to reconnect with our inner magic of being. This is the house of spiritual realization, and Haumea is spiritual wealth. As we adopt a more spiritual approach, we can develop a psychic connection to the unconscious, and over time, this will enable luck and miracles in our lives. Like musician Arlo Guthrie, who bought an old church and made it into a charitable center that serves people of all religions through free lunches, aid for family farmers, and services for abused children and the elderly. As a renowned folk singer-songwriter, he also holds a number of fundraising concerts each year that support families living with life-threatening illnesses. His personal exploration of spirituality includes Catholicism, Judaism, and Hinduism. As we deepen our contact with Source, the supportive fostering energies of Haumea combine with the healing forgiveness and peacefulness of this house to allow a deep spiritual connection with the oneness of existence. Like Annie Besant, who was deeply religious as a child and longed to serve humanity, which she did as president of the Theosophical Society for 25 years. In that role, she fostered the young Jiddu Krishnamurti as the new spiritual avatar through her world teacher project. She had a great love of, of ritual and ceremony and wrote more than 300 books and pamphlets. Well, and there we are, suddenly bang. Um, and that's brought us through uh, from, so we were just going through the Haumea chapter in this book, uh, New Stars for a New Era. Um, and um, 
it gives us an example of how the, how the book, and I'm obviously here to sell the book. Uh, I think none of you have already bought the book. I've got some questions already which suggest you have. And so that's lovely. Thank you so much. And many people have, and it, we're getting really good responses to it. Beautiful. Okay. Yeah. So I think uh, perhaps I'll leave that up while um, before we go onto the charts and while we talk. Yes. Is there any questions or Brilliant. Thank you so much, Alan. Yes, yeah, some really, really good observations in the comment section and great questions. First of all, I want to highlight that today um, uh, we have Homia conjunct Venus in transit. So Ulrika oh, Sullivan highlighted that. What a perfect divine timing. I mean, mm -hmm. you cannot make it up. You know, we planned this day yeah. completely unrelated to what's going on in the sky. And look, here we are diving deeper into Homea and she's conjunct uh, Venus. I just love Perfect. these synchronicities and it happens all the time uh, in the yeah. astrologer's life, right? Isn't that beautiful? Absolutely beautiful. Totally. Yes. Divine of timing. Course. Of yes. course. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, Okay, so first uh, question that came up several times is about the orbs. What is the orb of influence that you consider? Yes, um, let's let's. I'll, I'll, I'll move on to a chart. Um, just um, no, let's not do that yet. Mm -hmm. That'll take us into a discussion. Yes, so I, I go um, uh, for us. Um, you know, for, for people who are sensitive uh, and sort of working spiritually already, I, I actually use a six degree orb for, for, for the main aspects. Um, but generally, I would use a two to three degree orb. So if, if someone's not working spiritually already, uh, I would use a, a, a narrow orb. Um, and I use sort of, you know, two degree orb for um, like the um, in conjunct and the biquantiles and the. Um, very good. That's very so. helpful. So it's a matter of personal mm. preference, and some people, I, I know one person here, considered as wide as ten degree orb for her, and she felt a significance there. Well, if you feel a significance, I would absolutely use it. It's, yeah. it's that simple. I mean, it's the the aspects are just there to generalize the energies between um, the planets. Uh, all the planets are are relating to all the other planets in our chart all the time um, but the particular uh, angles particular aspects uh, um, obviously uh, over time people say oh it's stronger with that you know and it's that sort of influence and so on so and would the uh, same uh, answer apply for transiting um, delineations delineation of transits you know uh, look, I find yes, I mean, to some extent, but I mean, I tend to just use a, a, a one degree orb um, for, for transits um, and, and two, two, two degrees if I'm feeling so, but you can feel it up to four, absolutely, no, I'm with you, uh, or, or even five, you know, it's, it's sort of, but the thing with the transits of these outer planets there uh, take many years, uh, and so they, uh, they're phases in our lives. And, and those exact hits may correlate with events and so on, that's true, um, but those events can come anywhere in that phase. And, and it's all, it's it's a phase, so it, it changes, changes over the time. Yes, that's Understood. Right. Really good, thank you. Um, another good question about signif significance of returns. So, for example, as we speak today, one of the viewers has two of the dwarf planets returning to the position in the natal chart of the same uh, object. So how would you, how would you interpret, interpret that? that? Well, I, I would actually question um, whether that's possible because um, the orbit of the outer planets is too long for uh, our life you know, you know, they're, they're, they're all beyond Pluto so it's it's you know it's 250 years plus uh, and for so whoever seven, asked may need to revisit and recalculate um, what what they're looking at they may have actually we're, we're, been looking at the both natal natal charts of the same I'm not sure yeah yes that's right you may have put the natal chart around the outside rather than the current mm. okay yeah, that's what I would say. another quite we, common we, we one won't get... yeah mm. we won't be experiencing mm. that since the transits are so long 250 years yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, what about the placements in empty uh, houses? So there's no 
um, personal planet or the outer planet in the house. So a person is used to seeing an empty house in yeah. in their natal chart, and now there is these ten new dwarf planets. Um, how a, does that affect? How does that work? Mm -hmm. So um, all of the planets, they the ones that we're working with now, they've all been there, uh, uh, you know, throughout time, um, and um, been influencing us unconsciously. Um, so you have had um, an influence from a planet. And the thing with houses is that area of your life still is working. Uh, if you've got a planet there or not. It's uh, it's not it's not really the planet just emphasizes and gives a certain direction to to the work of that house or how that house manifests in your life. It's the sign on the cusp of the house that's key to giving you uh, the, the, sort of the understanding of how that house is manifesting in your life. And if there's a planet there, then it's been manifesting. Um, then it's then that accentuates or changes um, how the how that house is manifesting. So now you know you have sensed it, I would suggest in the past, uh, you just haven't been conscious of it. So it's a matter of sort of feeling into that uh, new placement that you've got there. Uh, and it's the same if you've got say a um, a conjunction, let's say, of one of the new planets with uh, your existing planets. you've you've thought of that existing planet, as the combination and you read the new planet into the existing planet because you've been feeling it so your interpretation of the existing planet is not the same as everyone else's and you have to separate out the new one and and but you've got an access to it through that conjunction so, so yes and i would i would I'm just separate. add to that yeah I, that brilliant thank you i would just add to that that you as you reflect on the meaning and delineation of the dwarf planets, um, as described in Alan's book, you may realize that in that empty house, you've actually been learning and realizing these um, mm -hmm. higher uh, expressions of dwarf planets. You've like mm -hmm. reached that point already in your life, but you didn't make an association to the dwarf planet. But now when you see there's like, oh my God, yeah, now, now I see why I'm actually feeling that way. It's certainly my case for Homea and Kwawar in the fifth house in Virgo. When you were going deeper into Homea, that's my empty mm -hmm. house in Virgo, but it's absolutely all about everything you said about Homea. So it's just beautiful yeah, to make the cool. connection now. Oh, beautiful. So good to hear. Yes, mm -hmm. totally. Yes, that's exactly it. Um, we, we discover these new planets, we put them in our chart, and, and, and we see the richer us that we've always sort of understood was there, but haven't been able to sort of find, the, find in the chart. Yeah, beautiful. Mm -hmm. Another great observation by Ulrika um, Sullivan in our community is about the current long-term transit of Homea, conjunct mm -hmm. Shapley attractor at one degree of Scorpio. How would you interpret oh, yeah. that in relation to the collective evolution? Are you familiar with the super cosmic points, as I like to call them, the galactic center, super galactic center, the great attractor and Shapley? So Homea is in conjunction to Shapley at the moment. Exactly. No, 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 I'm not. So give give me that briefly. I will talk about the beginning of, of, of uh, I want to talk about the beginning of uh, Scorpio there and her plunge into it. But yes, give me this. Yeah. Time. So the way I would tune into it now is it, uh, as I reflect on it, is how, how wonderful to see the manifestation of the unity consciousness that Homea is kind of bringing as high octave of Neptune. And with it, it's becoming. Um, um, extra potent because of that one degree Scorpio connected to Shapley attractor, which is one of the uh, greatest magnetic invisible forces in our known universe. So everything in our lives sort of is uh, pushing us to connect to the center. And if Homea is uh, is yeah. is playing yeah. on that note of this yeah. core invisible driving force in our lives, we are all pushed to return home, oh. return to consciousness, return to our center. I mean, don't that we see really it everywhere? Mm -hmm. Yes, that's really explaining to me the, the, the where we are uh, with Helmia um, in, in Scorpio there, because um, because how many has been in, in Aries for, for 30 years or something like that, in, in Libra you know, for 30 years. Uh, and um, and that's been the whole phase of human rights and, uh, you know, this, this um, you know, individual growth and, and so on, um, which, which we've just come through. 
And in the last couple of years, there's been the in out of, of um, Scorpio. And she, she's just been sitting at sort of zero degrees in just a couple of minutes uh, on her last sort of just, just a month or two back um, retrograde. And now she's moving forward into, into Scorpio for good. I uh, should be here for the next few years. And we, we're going through a huge um, force for, for change in the world, um, I think, at the moment. Uh, there is a, there's a huge pressure uh, for change. And, you know, we, we see the um, letting go of the old uh, that's necessary. Um, some people aren't. And there are some devastating wars uh, happening at the moment in the world. Uh, and those wars are all about righteousness. And, and, and that's all the um, sort of how may I, um, Neptune, mm. sort of connection there. Um, and some people are hanging on to the Neptune. They just, they just won't, they won't let go of their old, mythology their old view of, of, of why we're here on the planet but they have to otherwise we're all going to perish and so um there's there's we're, we're in a period where uh, um with how me in scorpio she's a she's an earth goddess and a fire goddess um hawaiian islands uh, myth uh, and so the islands come up volcanically out of the uh and so she's earth and fire and uh, she's in Scorpio. She's 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 a firebrand. She's she's going to be actually encouraging us to to um, to find that connection, meaning uh, each each of us, or you know, attack everyone else who doesn't have the same as ours because we we feel so threatened by them. Mm. beautiful yeah. manifestation of this combination of Homea and Shapley that I've seen very physically and tangibly just in the last couple of days as I connected with a, a community here in Ireland that is talking about revealing the truth behind the system who governs the world all the secret kind of stuff and how the system actually works but now they're yeah. approaching it no longer from a um upset and let's fight the system approach not at all actually coming uh, in peace acceptance and let's find a way to 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 live as a side by side for people who want to choose sovereignty and freedom and being responsible for their own affairs and allowing the system to still hold people who are not quite there yet so like yeah. it's the unity consciousness and the truth of of mm. of our existence and not letting the mm. differences separate us anymore but Homia is coming in there to help us um come into unity and and peace and solutions right. and co-creation yes that's right we are all one it doesn't matter that we believe different things <laughs> quite amazing yes. to see that there mm. yeah and the sovereignty that you were speaking with in there is is uh, Varuna um just mm. just a Put that in there. Varuna is all about this, this sovereign, new, new understanding of sovereignty, higher octave of, of Very sovereignty. good. Would anyone be able to comment on where Varuna is at the moment? What's her transit? We would love that. Or if yes. you know, Alan. <laughs> I, I don't hold that information. So I we can ask comment. someone to type it in the, in the comment and we'll get it's back to it. Yeah. Okay, and uh, one more future transit uh, that's coming that um, Ulrika is curious about is... Um, in July 2025, Uranus will be conjunct Sedna and Pleiades mm -hmm. as Uranus ingress mm -hmm. into Gemini. So there'll be this, mm -hmm. it's like mm -hmm. Sedna and Pleiades will accompany Uranus ingress into Gemini. What that might yes. mean. What's your yes, perspective? Exactly. No, I'm looking forward to it totally. It's going to be a consciousness explosion, is my hope. It's a consciousness explosion. So we've just had Sedna go into. Gemini, yeah, um, huge change. Um, you know, AI, bang, it's real. Mm -hmm. uh, and Sedna, Sedna's discovery event, um, neural networks were discovered in the same year. Uh -huh. um, and so, yeah, and so, um, so Sedna's just gone into Gemini. Um, we are going to, what is AI going to do? It's going to take all of our work. Um, last time Sedna was at this closest point to the Earth and the Sun that she's at at the moment um, was 11,406 years ago. That's the big size of the orbit. And we had the Neolithic Revolution where we um, stopped hunting animals and started growing vegetables. 
Suddenly we had more time on our hands and all of our civilization has come from that point. Um, and uh, we're at another point where we're going to have a lot of time on our hands. Uh, and how are we going to use that time and how conscious are we of, of what we can do with it and so on. And so that's the Sedna and Gemini. Um, it's a 50-year, 40-year um, transit. Um, she's moving as fast as she ever does. Um, some, sometimes she's thousands of years in each sign. Um, and, uh, but Uranus coming up is really going to catalyze that, I think, in some way. And it'll be an AI sort of catalyzed thing. Uh, we're already experiencing it. Uh, you know, Sedna went into Gemini and, and um, Google called their AI Gemini. Um, so it's... it's, it's uh, Amazing it, that, Yes. And so what I'd say in relation to that and the Haumea is Haumea is just changed sign, I think in, in conjunct um, to Sedna. Um, and, and Pluto's just changing sign. Uh, and that's um, trying to to uh, Sedna, uh, and um, no, is it the Pluto one that's in conjunct? Someone, someone will have to give me those. Um, but um, anyway, the, the, those three planets are doing a dance where um, Pluto's um, pushing us into um, a, a new collective consciousness there in Aquarius. And, and um, Sedna is pushing us into a new personal consciousness in, in Gemini. Uh, and how Mia is, is bringing the social um, scorpionic deep meaning, um, how is it all working together, uh, that this is this, this change that we're in. So it's, it's a huge yeah. evolutionary change that we're in. Absolutely. And we can certainly see it on social media circles, the amount of people that are yearning to to find the truth of their soul expression, people searching for their soul purpose and soul alignments and mm. all these modalities are popping up to allow people to go within and start embodying their true soul expression. So, I mean, just a beautiful validation yeah. there from the aspects and transits. Absolutely. Yeah, totally, totally. Really yeah. good. Okay, well, I have one more question for you. Um, how do you delineate the interplay between transiting dwarf planets conjuncting natal dwarf planets where you have a combination of different um, dwarf planets coming yeah. together to create something uh, <laughs> yes I, I, there, it tends to be um, sort of karmic periods let's say in our lives karmic um, periods where, yeah where um that particular whatever transiting planet we're talking about, uh, we need to look at the um, you know the natal placement to see how that energy is manifest in the life, and then as it goes through the different houses uh, and conjuncts uh, different things or transits uh, the other planets, uh, that is developed. That aspect, that consciousness, is being developed in some way. So if they're conjunct, it tends to be sort of fated times in our lives um, amazing but for example the person that is asking has transiting orcus in virgo conjuncting her natal homea in virgo mm -hmm. so okay. what's that going to do um so orcus is a, is about transmuting shadow into light at the top level um that karmic consciousness where we're aware that everything that we do has a result and 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 you know the more we do that, we realize well, the better we can we can uh, point that result. Um, the uh, the more light we can generate in the process, the the better it's going to work. So so definitely a karmic time um, with um, Orcus conjunct Halmea, yeah. um, where um, if, if there's always shadow everywhere, and so uh, uh, it's it's. Halmea will be bringing the psychic rejuvenation necessary um, to, um, to 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 work with that to empower that Orcus um, transmuting shadow into light. There, very um, good. And would you then look at the natal position of the transiting planet to see if mm. that energy kind of extend to the mix? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the trans the transiting planet is how we're developing that energy, how we're mm. growing it. Makes yeah. sense. Beautiful. Yeah. So question that kind of connects to this that popped up by, from Carla, what happens when we have two dwarf planets in conjunction in our natal chart with a personal planet? 
again mm. quite. So this is um, beautiful. Uh, what happens? Um, so there are ethereal planets. These 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 new ones. They're outside of of Pluto, um, and um, so and Dane Roger um, tuned us in with these higher octaves. I'm talking about them being higher octaves. That's a way of we know the inner planet, and we can think of the outer one as being a higher octave of the inner planet, a more spiritual level um, version of that energy. But Dane Roger reminded us that the outer planets act on the inner planets. It's not like, oh, I've got the inner planet, and oh, it's a spiritual more. Yes, it is. But it's also the outer planet is acting on the inner planet and, and repolarizing that inner energy. And so it's the same when you've got a conjunction of an outer planet with uh, an inner planet. The outer planet is actually kind of repolarizing that inner planet, uh, tuning it into the more ethereal um, energies. Uh, and and um, so you, you will have thought of that inner planet as being kind of more ethereal in, in one of the ways or both the ways of, of the planet, the outer planets that are. Um, uh, That's brilliant. That makes sense. Mm. I love that perspective. Mm. Thank you. Um, okay. Right. So, would we shall we look at some of the chart examples um, that you have? It's beautiful. So, I think this is you to start with, huh? Yes. And you've talked about how you 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 related to the um, fifth house placement, yeah. and you've also got Marky Marky there in the fifth. So you. You know, there's a rich sort of understanding. You've got a, both very playful planets, so playful with the divine, understanding that play is the best way to approach the divine. And that house is such a beautiful um, house from that point of view, a playful house, joyful house, and so on. So lovely placements. Um, and so then we look at your aspects to see how your how me and energy is sort of tied into your other sides of your personality and your consciousness and so on so opposite mercury we're having here trine chiron uh, squaring moon and varuna so um very i'm going to say powerful um moon varuna conjunction in the sense that varuna is i say sort of mastery consciousness um we develop that mastery through through a sort of through a sovereignty and sovereignty is a dance between ourselves and the collective consciousness and we have to say i can do something and other people have to say uh yes i, I see you can do that I, can you do it for me uh and um you know we see in this community that you've gathered in your work we see that varuna very strongly where you know you're you're, you're able to claim the sovereignty and in people value that in you and that's that's coming through because of the conjunction with the moon in the first house there where it's, mm. it's at the center of you and you're able to sort of to mediate it in the in each moment with the moon there and connect with people and so on and and, gotcha. and bring the wisdom that Verena, Verena has to that particular immediacy now yeah. the um the square is key, I think, with how Mia here in terms of because the squares are, you know, strengths over time. They're challenges, but they become strengths over time. And so there's a um a real um strength that you've developed with that center that I've just described inside you. Um uh, you, you're able to interface it with this creative, loving, joyful work that you're doing that's reaching out into the collective consciousness. Um, through, yeah, I really have um, to say that that joyful uh, creativity and playfulness is the thing that always gets me out of any funk, you know, when you when you feel just stress about everyday things. If I can always, I am reminded, I believe, through this placement uh, very quickly it just mm. I, I have like minutes of getting down and like where is the joy where is the joy here how can i grasp it in in my current experience and immediately mm. it brings me back to to alignment mm. so i can thank homia here for that mm. that's absolutely right and and we can all thank 
um, you and and this opposition to Mercury in the eleventh here for for you being able to bring it out into the collective consciousness and, really and articulate it in in that sort of Mercury way that that's needed um, to to bring messages across to people. You know, mm. and, and thank you. Physical level. There's one more note that I wanted to share with the community on my 10th house and seeing Gong Gong there and Celestia, or however you pronounce it, um, where people often comment on the mm. feeling of love and kind of mother, a sense of a mother that they may sense coming from me. And when I saw the Gong Gong there as um, higher octave of Celestia, the empathic consciousness and Celestia, mm -hmm. uh, the higher love mm -hmm. consciousness, high octave of Venus and Mars. So mm -hmm. I just want to share with the community that I, I think this is what they're tuning into and that's what they're sensing. And that's that's um, that's how it comes through. It was just a nice to see it there. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You, you are able to bring it across to people, to interface it with people with very strong um, those mm -hmm both those planet there absolutely but I, I think it's also coming from your Hamia here and the opposition mm. to make you know so gotcha. yeah all right thank you yeah let's move on to the mm. next one then there's a few more charts that want to be shared thank you Alan that's right it's beautiful Ursula that's... are you with us we want people here so we can talk about them I'm um, here I'll just I'll just create your chart for oh, you. Oh, thank you. Um, That's so kind. While you're doing that, um, yeah, just want to say thank you for your university and for um, oh, the vibrations you. going through Astrology Hub, through circles like with Linda Bird and um, you know Amanda. It's just it's nice to finally see you in person. Many of my friends have taken your classes. It's oh, it's good to hear. Oh, yeah, yeah. Good. oh beautiful. Yeah, so beautiful. Um, thanks for giving that feedback. Yes, perhaps I could talk about the classes as I just do this. Um, so we do. I do run uh, the Dwarf Planet University, and um, it uh, we have six week classes uh, where you study your own chart and you do assignments and so on. Um, on that, now just just give me your your birth um, date here for a moment there. All right, so uh, what would I say in relation to that? I'm prepared to have something to say now. Um, <laughs> so what we're looking at uh, opposite here is uh, the moon and your part of fortune, yeah? Uh, and, um, and up here we've got Mars and Orcus, and here we've got Neptune. So... Uh, You've got a, um, I mean, I'm going to say, I think that's beautiful. The opposition with your moon and part of fortune is is beautiful. We don't tend to think oppositions are beautiful, but um, just in terms of sensitizing you to this Halmea energy, you know, 12th house can be hard to access. But with the opposition to the moon, I think you're probably um, reaching for that sort of um, connection uh, with the psychic unity and finding the opportunity to do that. Sometimes not, and sometimes, and that's the opposition. They're finding that balance between your personal needs and the deep spiritual needs that you have. Uh, and then, obviously, into this um, kite, uh, Neptune here, spiritual consciousness, um, Uranus, uh, I mean Mars, Orcus here. You've got a. Uh, uh, you, you you can. What work do you do? Do you do what? Do you have a um, profession or what do you? Um, painting and galactic astrology, but a, a very serious painter of the figure and cosmic portraiture uh, is coming online. Beautiful. Uh, yes. Um, so this is um, both of these things uh, uh, are manifest here with the Mars Orcus, where you're able to sort of you've got a, a, a huge resourcefulness uh, and uh, and an ability to sort of um, uh, upcycle um, existing um, art or ideas. Uh, into uh, a new a light filled um, sort of um, understanding or social activities anyway up there um, and so and and the grand trine with Neptune and and your moon here is all about that you're bringing you're bringing that across to people 
um, you know, particularly your, your service. I mean, the galactic astrology, your the your creative um, is also a, a service. The creative work can also be seen as a ser service, uh, and and um, so that's what that grant. That's what the kite is talking about. It's talking about how you're able to sort of connect with the deeper meaning. Uh, and bring it across to people in in your daily routine, in your service, uh, and and in that sort of connect people with with a spiritual consciousness and um, work with them to release uh, uh, stuff. I mean that's what art does. It sort of connects with people on a deep level and enables them to release stuff. Uh, and 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 you know bring light um, to, to to something. Um, so May that's I, what I'd say that. That's beautiful. May I just add quickly? I love seeing Salacia. Uh, Hold on, let me just uh, change the view here. I love uh, seeing in Ursula's chart Salacia in her fourth house and Gong Gong in her fifth house, knowing mm. that she's a mother to many children, but also um, just naturally becoming this mother figure within our community holding space for the newbies for for the youngsters and making sure that they feel safe um to be here and to express and so salicia so opposing her mars natal mars and orcus in the 10th house when she comes mm. out uh, as a public figure she's drawing that frequency from the opposition of salicia and then gong gong there in the fifth house if in connection to us as a children i, I just think that's really awesome but higher love Beautiful. of tapes, yes. right? Thank you. Yes. I'm going to go hide in the 12th house. Thank you so much, Alan and Julia. <laughs> You've done well. You did well coming <laughs> and being out because we all learned from it. So it's, you helped us all. Beautiful. Thank Beautiful. Thank you. Okay. Let me get back to um, play from current slide. There I am. And Hector. So for anyone uh, watching this from uh, outside of our community, Hector is the gentleman who helped to create the Galactic Astro Chart Calculator for our entire community and doing it so selflessly and just uh, joyfully um, and always with love in his heart. So I just thought uh, the community would yeah. like to see where his fourth mm. planet placements are. And are you, are you with us, Hector? Or uh, Probably not. Probably not. All right. Um, so, um, so here we've got Halmir in the sixth, conjunct the south node. Uh -huh. So, br bringing a, a, a lot of um, spiritual um, connection um, into this life from past lives, um, and um, you know, opposite the north node. So, this is doing something. In, in the collective unconscious, in, in doing something spiritual in the world, um, often hard to, to, to find that um, what to do with uh, um, the North Node in the 12th. Um, but it just evolves over time. It sounds like you're making a wonderful contribution. I'd, I'd put that down to this connection with the nodal axis uh, with, with how many are there. Really mm -hmm. good. And is it possible that yet again, the connection of Salicia and Gong Gong as the higher octaves of love in his 11th house, where he 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 has a desire to to offer his everyday actions, everyday service for the collective betterment, for the collective evolution. So his love uh, expression is channeled into the collective. Isn't that interesting mm -hmm. to see there? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, beautiful. I'm, I'm, I love it that you're you're um, bringing our attention to last year and Gong Gong. They're so they're so crucial in terms of coming out from ourselves to 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 the new world that mm. we're living in, and 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 helping everyone with that. Yes, at the top level, both of them. They're so good. And the eleventh house, yeah, yeah, beautiful placement for um, participatory. The thing with Gong Gong, participatory, so beautiful. That's that's the whole thing. With this community work that we're we're needing to do more and more, cool. um, and that that's why we've discovered them there. Yeah, really good, beautiful. Thank you. Should we move on to Joshua? 
Are you with us? He is. And just a quick introduction, Joshua um, is helping me personally to develop the support for the community for the last, I think, year and a half. And, and it's just been such a wonderful, wonderful addition to the community in terms of the replies and the support and the channeled wisdom that comes through. Uh, and again, from a very beautiful, compassionate place in his soul. So I wanted to share his. Oh, yeah. Lovely. Hi. Joshua. Hi. Yeah. Hey. There you are. Beautiful. Lovely. Yeah. Lovely to see you. Thanks for putting your chart forward and for that work you're doing. Beautiful. Oh, my gosh. Uh, Thank you for being here. It's awesome. <laughs> well, that's good to hear. Love it. Um, so what can we see here finding how me up? Yes, here in the 11th. Uh -huh. actually come to an 11th house placement. So a, a sort of a very um, community-oriented uh, placement for how me up. And a sort of a rich, there's a rich bounty for you with that eleventh house placement. I mean, have, were you relating to the eleventh house interpretation as we, as I went through it earlier? Or? Yes, definitely. It's actually a conjunct Black Moon Lilith in the mean calculation as well. Uh, mm -hmm. It's at twenty six degrees, so quite a close conjunction there. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I was wondering your thoughts on that as well. Well, I haven't studied Black Moon Lilith, so uh, I can't really help you with that. Um, somebody, can you if, give me... If I may, somebody, if yeah, I may because yeah. something immediately popped in, and that is um, you finding um, a way to express your true desire for unity consciousness, for the betterment of all, with a sense of almost rebellion that Lilith can come with in, in her final calculation that the mean Lilith in our calculator is. So just go for it uh, when you want to. And and you do it already through your posts. If if anyone, uh, especially on Facebook, if we see your latest musing, I mean, so spot on and really quite just bold like a Lilith would uh, in an amazing <laughs> wisdom way, you know? That, that sounds beautiful. There's a there's a real creativity with Halmea and a sort of a a, a, a a spiritual energy that's kind of pouring through there. And it sounds like you're able to sort of uh, articulate that, use that in some way, and, and in so a practical sense too, which is so important, so important in this in these times that we're living in. So. And I and looked so then the square to Varuna in Gemini. Uh, mm -hmm. all about sovereignty so supporting us mm -hmm. through your post in that you really kind of pondered that how to become sovereign and liberated mm -hmm. um, and then square Beautiful. to Saturn Uranus is it no not 27 degrees what is the square there so oh the square, square to Venus to, isn't it in Sagittarius Venus. yep it's Venus yep beautiful square to Venus I mean that that is um um that's the, the higher octave and the lower octave uh, square one another there. So it's Venus, Neptune, Haumea are the octaves here. And so Haumea is repolarizing Neptune, Neptune's repolarizing Venus. Here you've got the, so you, you've got the, the challenge to bring this sort of spiritual richness that you experience in, in the world, in your contact with people in the world, um, and and to, to, to bring it into your values and your relationships, to make it practical uh, in, in, in the world, in the second house, um, you know, to, to, to even sort of make a living out of it or something. You know, it's that sort of practicality with the, with the, um, um, with the Venus in the second and, the, and that square. And over time, it's a, it's a, it's a strength. It's, it becomes you can do that. It, you, 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 you know, the Venus isn't kind of scared of that spiritual power that, that you know, disrupts a, a neat little world. Um, you know, and, uh, and, and so you, you embody that and, you, and so on. So, yeah, very, very powerful placement. Opposition to Ceres, um, able to, um, so that's a, that's, a, that's a grand cross, isn't it, there? Um, and so uh, uh, able to nurture yourself and others um, through this um, connecting with the spiritual center um, by focusing on joy and love and, and so on uh, in that nurturing process. Uh, 
And yes, you develop a sovereignty through that, which you know, sovereignty in the eighth house there. So it's a it's an occult sovereignty. It's a it's a spiritual sovereignty um, that that you can develop. And it's amazing it, with with Varuna. It's a matter of of of, of doing the work. Of, of stepping up and saying, you know, I'll try, it, I'll do it, uh, you know, and it sounds like you're 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 doing it. So I, <laughs> I encourage you. It's beautiful. It's beautiful, um, Julia, that you've put people forward who you know, I know, and we can talk about it. So, so I think makes rich. sense. Really good. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. You're welcome, Joshua. <laughs> so beautiful. Um, and do we have? One more, yes, I think. Or is it in? Um, no, just last one. So, um, Margo, are you with us? I thought she was earlier. So, Margo is um, also our support team member. Um, uh, also, very creative, uh, beautiful heart, humble heart. And um, I just wanted to offer her this gift uh, as a thank you for being just such a mm. wonderful support. And Kelly's here too, <laughs> um, um, who who could equally. So I suppose, well, let's do Margot. And if we have time, we can uh, bring Kelly's chart yeah. in too. Absolutely. Um, so, um, Margot, what we're looking at is how many oh, yeah. yes. in, in the um, in the eighth house. So a uh, beautiful Kalmia and Maki Maki in the eighth, very lovely. Both, as I say, playful in contact with the divine. And we're talking about the the uh, the eighth house, which is the deep and meaningful house, um, the divine in a way. Uh, and so um, so a, a lovely placement for Kalmia. Um, Try and sex us to lunar nodes. Is it six? It is sextile and trying the nodes exactly, mm -hmm. which is a, a beautiful. I mean that that turns the um, nodal axis into an easy opposition. Um, the, the nodal axis doesn't want to be an easy op opposition, but it just what it's talking about is is being that how mere is like a a, a handle uh, on how you can mm, move from your karma to uh, your dharma. Um, and you, you you're enabled in that process through the um, the bounty of Haumea, through the, mm. um, the the oneness and the magic of Haumea. As you as you and you look at the Haumea, it's um, sort of all flows um, to the um, to Haumea with beautifully placed. I mean, sometimes flows can we just don't do it, but with because it's to the axis, the nodal axis, um, beautifully placed. Now the the um, sort of evolutionary um, possibility uh, is this biquintile from Haumea to um, well, that's a Mercury Celasia third house cusp um, conjunction. Um, so. Um, your um there's a, you've got a, a an opportunity to interface this um oneness of 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 uh of existence uh, that you that you feel uh, and you you feel it sort of philosophically you feel it educatively uh here in the ninth house uh, and that um you're able to interface that with your ideas and your communication and your your connection with people, your psychic connection, your your sexual connection, but at a higher level, your um, psychic connection uh, with people uh, there through that biquintiles. Biquintiles have to be developed actively; and they don't just work. Um, and so, um, the more you engage with people uh, in a in a higher love way and talk. Uh, or write or do something like that, then um, the the, um, the more you can um, bring across the, the, the wonderful magic of life to, to people. Really good. It's beautiful how Margot was um, inspired recently to start creating this beautiful bedtime cosmic stories where she takes people on a journey uh -huh. to different star systems. So the Aquarian uh -huh. 
um, element mm -hmm. there and the Virgo and the eighth house going into the <laughs> subconscious and um, offering yeah. it from a pl yeah. place of love, seeing Salacia yeah. there and Gong Gong also. So mm -hmm. just yeah, lovely manifestation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And the opposition Gong Gong to Maki Maki, giving that big perspective and understanding of how to engage with people and bring it across. Um, nice. mm. Beautiful. We're, we're reaching the two hours and there are so many more <laughs> comments and messages <laughs> and different aspects. Um, we can take, we can take a, a little more, but yes. Yeah. So bring, bring, bring in any new questions. Perhaps I'll stop the share. So we'll come back to um, being us. And uh, so if there's here, anything. There's one nice one from Eleanor. I'm interested in knowing more about the opposition as well. For example, when a higher octave of Aries opposes the lower octave of Pluto, the big sister and little brother dynamics. Mm, yes. Um, well, the oppositions are balances that we need to achieve in our lives. Yeah. Um, we think we can think we're born in the middle of the chart. And, and so they're pulling in opposite directions in our lives. Uh, they're working in, in opposite houses. Um, and so we need to, with the opposition, we need to Pluto to Halmea. I mean, it's 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 um, powerful um, uh, as an opposition um, because obviously the you know, um, Pluto is dissolving the ego and Halmea is connecting us with the oneness of of, of existence. Uh, and and what have we got when we've got the, the um, ego dissolved? We've only got the oneness of existence, really. That's all we've got. Uh, and so that opposition is probably bringing that to um, uh, her awareness in each moment, in each um, you know experience in her life, and over time developing that ability to to interface, um, change with rejuvenation. Really good. Thank you. Uh, great question or interesting question here from Jennifer. If if you're here, what would you say about interceptions? Uh, if this question wasn't answered yet, it wasn't. Um, Jennifer, do you mean when the dwarf planets are uh, positioned in the intercepted house? Uh, let's say even with no planets, it feels like the, the zodiac sign in the intercepted house is somewhat suppressed in the earlier years. A lot of wisdom is gathered. So now when you are seeing the dwarf planet there, you can receive greater richness about uh, the meaning of that interce interception. Have you looked at interceptions, Alan? Yes and and no. Um, I mean, uh, I do in the, in the case studies that I work with. Um, what I would say, yes, I would agree. Uh, the the um, you know intercepted uh, planets, uh, we have to kind of feel our way into understanding the energy. Um, okay. It's not manifesting. Oh, hold on, I'm gonna have to mute whoever is not muted. Are we good? Yes. Good. Yeah. Um, and. Um, so yes, we're not feeling the energy manifest directly with the intercepted planets. Uh, so we have to sort of feel our way into them. It's kind of, it's a bit like a sort of a 12th house uh, in the sense that we can't directly experience it, but uh, we, we, by being sort of more sensitive. Uh, so it's just, it's like an extra um, challenge for us uh, with that placement. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Um, there were uh, just the two charts that were actually three charts that were sent a uh, few moments before we started the call. Um, yes. So. Um, we, we answered I, the, the first the, one on the empty houses. Um, you know, the lady had so many, um, sorry, Marie had so many empty houses and now it feels like her chart has suddenly come alive, especially mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. Celestia and Celestia and Gong Gong in her eighth house. Um, and yeah. just appreciation for your courses, your book that she loves uh, reading at this time. That's lovely. Totally lovely. Yes. Okay. So, and there was the question, what is the time frame and impact of returns in the natal chart for outer planets? 
I have Power, fourth house, and Ixion, fifth house, both as returns as per Astro Seek. Uh, yes, so that, I'm not sure what you uh, mean by that. We, we, we already, I think, yeah. talked about that one where we yeah. can't actually. That is probably an error. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think so. Beautiful. Um, yes, so we, 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 we could look at these other couple of charts that have come in. Um, uh, are those people here? So um, uh, Actually, those two charts are, that were sent, uh, they are, and they sent them because they, they, they couldn't make it. They couldn't make it. In that case, I think we probably won't do them now, yeah. just because um, yeah. um, I'm tired. <laughs> yeah, there was one from uh, Tara. She's here, Quantum Sunrise, uh, California. Um, I can share it in um, from the the chart that you sent me. If you hold on, I'll yeah. share my screen. Please. Okay, here we are. Oof. Um, busy chart i'm not sure if you can navigate the, uh, this software but here on the left side uh, she highlights the important alignments so uh, let me see homea has 11 aspects to other chart points okay i'm just you making my mm -hmm. yeah so i'm just making my screen bigger so i can so i can see it um Beautiful. So we're we're finding how Mia. Uh -huh. So we're looking at symbols for how Mia. And uh, she's um, there in Virgo conjunct Venus. Yes, that's what I was just looking at. Beautiful. Yes. So um, Virgo conjunct. Uh, so how Mia conjunct Venus. I mean, again, beautiful conjunction in the sense that. Uh, Venus lower octave of the of the uh, triplicate uh, octaves there, uh, Haumea, Neptune, Venus. So you've got that personal um, sort of um, joy, that personal um, sense of, of of how you like it, together with your spiritual connection with the oneness of the world uh, of everything. Um, and so um, it's a beautiful. Uh, beautiful conjunction. Venus, you know, uh, they, they really sort of go together in terms of sort of being out in nature and sort of doing that sort of um, sort of enjoying uh, the, the, the world, the, the, the natural world. Um, and then um, in the third house, I'm thinking very creative, um, expressing uh, yourself with with um, with words uh, in communication, writing or something like that. So, are you? Can you can you give me some feedback? Are you? How do you? Are you? Do you work with expression, There's, creative expression, in some way? Well, yes. I'm in in doing this work in the galactic astrology. It's a lot about the the communicating through, yeah. you know, to the client and and finding that creative way to give yeah sometimes um difficult information <laughs> yes and 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 information that may be difficult for someone to hear or to understand you see you know um and and i think that's um so is this an opposition with your moon i'm thinking here mm -hmm. kind of wide in fact but it's it is an opposition with your moon uh, in the ninth there, which is enabling you to bring this across to people. Yeah, it's 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 how to do that. It's definitely a skill, totally. Um, and what else have we got in terms of aspects? Um, so squaring, you'll have to help me here a little bit because I'm... Uh, Vesta, I think. Vesta, it's square Vesta. And uh, what have we got here? A sextile to, to Mercury, is that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, beautiful. And a trine to New North Node. So um, very beautiful uh, in terms of that nodal axis uh, connection. Um, not seeing the sextile to the South Node, but uh, 
Maybe it's just that that aspect is not drawn. Mm. Um, so, and the square to Mercury, uh, again, so opposition um, to the um, sort of to the moon, uh, and uh, it's not actually T squared to Mercury, is it? So it's a square to Mercury. Um, it's probably coming from the Venus, in fact, yeah. um, in that case. Um, but the conjunction is 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 close. So when they're conjunct, you've got that square. So what I'm saying is the opposition to 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 the moon and the square to Mercury in the fifth is enabling you to. Um, in that you, you, I can just tell by what how you were talking about your communication process that uh, you're very sensitive to to the other in the, in that communication process, which which is what is important in communicating something. <laughs> Actually, it's a matter of getting it through from us to the other. And, and a lot of us aren't sensitive actually to the other uh, in that way. Um, gong Gong will also be playing a part in that. Um, where is your Gong Gong in terms of, is this Gong Gong here? I'm not familiar with these signs, uh, with yeah. these symbols. I think that is your Gong Gong. There. Gong Gong is... Um... Uh, oh, I'm pointing with my mouse as if you can see it. Um, yeah, I believe, exactly. <laughs> I believe it's up in Aquarius there. Yeah, um, yeah that's 17. what I'm with, with, it, with, with like a, a lightning bolt underneath. Yeah, the yeah, 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 totally. Yes, Gong Gong is an energetic um, sort of empathic consciousness, feeling another. And so you, 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 you've got a strong Gong Gong uh, in terms of... Um, their eighth house connection, they're really helping with this communication, the sensitivity to to other people. Uh, yeah. Do you have questions? Ask me a question, maybe. Oh, thank you. That's Thanks. that it it resonates, it fits. Yeah. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Well, that's all good. Beautiful. I just have one more uh, request, just even briefly mentioning um, Kelly is here. Uh, one more uh, uh, important member of our um, admin support, such valuable, valuable, um, gorgeous, beautiful, joyful soul. And her, she, uh, Kelly, you have, you mentioned you have Homea uh, or Uranus conjunct Homea. So the transiting Uranus is on your natal Homea. Is that right? Um, and which house? First house. Would you like to comment on that? So transiting Uranus yes. on home, yeah, first house. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, um, yes, so you're 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 having surprises and and new experiences relating to your connection with the oneness of humanity. Um, you're, you're, you're with Uranus conjunct there. So Uranus is 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 awakening us all the time to to um, whatever Uranus is touching. Um, to so that we grow in consciousness, uh, and so you're connecting. Your, your, I mean, coming here, me talking to you about your chart is a manifestation of Uranus conjunct your Hamia there. <laughs> <laughs> and the more you can sort of um, open to the new and to the adventures that are possible uh, in your life. Uh, the more you're going to feel really fulfilled and sort of nourished by the, the, the connection you feel with, with the world. And, and in the first house, that's kind of at the heart of, of you. And so um, can be hard to access without sort of going inside. Uh, but with that Uranus there, you're probably, um, it's, it's, it's happening at the heart of you, but it's also manifesting in events like coming here and so on in your life where you can, you know, um bring that out brilliant thank you uh, i just want to acknowledge mm -hmm. kirk's background thank you so much for sharing the image of the um of the dwarf planets i'm not sure if you guys uh, noticed uh, one of our um viewers here kirk has this on his background so i just wanted to bring it up so we have yeah. homia here makimake said now orcas different ways yeah. how they look yeah, and this is kind of in size order in terms mm -hmm. of um, being too, too small. Cool. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay. There is a lot of love and appreciation and gratitude for your time and wisdom and just yeah. wonderful, yeah. wonderful soul that you are, Alan. We are so grateful. Oh. 
such an honor mm. to have you here with us and answering all these questions. We definitely, I, I certainly learned a lot and I, I just love the examples of charts that we saw. Uh, just mm. that's such a beautiful validation of how, how we express and what mm. others feel uh, energetically from mm. us. Astrology mm. is ever so amazing. Yeah, it is. <laughs> that's the beauty of it. Oh, and thank you so much for inviting me and thank you to the community for being here and so on. Really, it's we're in a key phase of, of growth in terms of the world and, and each of us, obviously. And, and it's so important that we do come together and explore these new consciousness energies. And lovely. Thank you so much for, for inviting me. And, Beautiful. Yeah. I invite you all to unmute yourselves and say goodbye. Uh, as we close this and um, I'll make the replay available within the next few hours in our usual places and uh, and share it with the community so much love and best of luck to you Alan um, much love on your path ahead thank Beautiful. you Alan thank, thank you thank you thank you so much <laughs> thank you Alan hi bye everybody thank you bye bye thanks thank you bye 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 Thanks, Alan. Cheerio. Bye-bye.